Today on Technique Tuesday, we feature guest Thomas Fitzpatrick from Paramount and the Carolina Crown Color Guard, and he gives us a lesson on how to tape our saber. Hey everyone, my name is Thomas Fitzpatrick. Some of my marching experience includes three summers with Carolina Crown and two seasons with Paramount World. And I'm so excited to come to you on this Technique Tuesday to talk about taping your saber and properly placing and utilizing your catch tape. So some of the materials you will need for today are your saber. Today I'm using a 39 inch King saber. You'll need white and black electrical tape. I use scotch, a pair of scissors, and a measuring tape or a sheet of paper, and we'll get back to that in a minute. So I like to first start with the blade. So you'll take the white tape and you'll start by placing a small strip along the bottom of the blade as close to the hilt as you can get. And you're gonna wrap once around to cover the base of the blade where the blade meets the hilt. And then you're gonna start going upwards at a very slight angle. You should cover about a quarter of the last roll of tape that you made. And you'll start to see almost like a candy stripe effect as you start turning the saber over. So as you can see, I'm about a quarter way up the saber and there's a little candy stripe effect going upwards on the saber as I'm rotating it, just so we can get some nice coverage, equal coverage over the saber. So here I am done with the first layer of our saber taping. As you can see, it starts at the very base of the hilt and goes all the way up to the tip on a slight diagonal, creating that little overlap that we need to get a nice full equal coverage of the saber. So we're gonna do the same process again, just going in the opposite direction. So an easy way that I can tell is if I'm going in the opposite direction is which way the hilt was on the side that I taped it first. So the first time I started with the hilt on my left side, so this time I'm just gonna start with the hilt on my right side just to ensure that it's going in the opposite direction. So once again, still having that nice equal coverage with the slight overlap as we go up this blade a second time. So here I am done with the second layer of our saber taping of the blade. And like I said, we should be going in the opposite direction on this layer so that we can see these little X's going up and down the blade. This is to ensure some safety and protection in our hands whenever we catch so it doesn't feel as hard when we go into this catch position at tape. So the next thing we're gonna do is tape the tip of the saber. This part is a little tricky in my opinion. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just take a nice good size width of tape and place it on the saber. And just put that little piece on the back and connect those two. And what you're gonna do is start twisting the tape. Whichever way is fine, there's no like correct answer. Just so that it starts twisting the tape down towards the blade. And you'll keep twisting until the strand is about equal width and equal twistiness all the way around. And then you're just gonna start wrapping up the blade. If you get to the top and you realize you're out of tape, you can just pull more tape off and keep twisting, or you can change the starting position of where we connected to the tape to the blade the first time. So you can perfectly match that up with the end of your tip. And after we're done with the strand, I like to go around once just to secure it. And then we're gonna make two X's on the top of the tip. So one strand going across. And one strand going over. So it should make a little T shape over the top of the blade. 
And we just do that process twice. And after we're done with our two T's, I like to just press the sides down so we can get the tip as smooth as possible when we put our last layer on. So the final step for your tip is I start at the very top and just go in a wrapping in a circular motion, similar to how we tape the blade, but going downward. So I start at the top of the blade and going down towards the hilt. Once you get two wraps into the blade, that should be secure enough to hold your saber. So you can just cut that tape off and then you're done with the tip. The next piece that we're gonna tape is called the hilt. So my process is taking one long strand of black tape and just cutting it off from the roll. And once you have that long piece of black tape, you wanna connect it so that you're trying to cover as much of the hilt as possible to where it meets the base of this cage. And then again, much like the blade, you're gonna start wrapping in a circular motion, going at a very slight diagonal just so that we can have some overlap. So once you have the base of your hilt mostly covered, you'll still wanna cover the screw on the end. And the easiest way to do that is just to do some X's and T's over it as best as you can to cover up as much as possible. So much how like we did the tip, I'm just gonna place short little strands of black tape over this screw. Once you are satisfied with the coverage of the bolt on the end, I like to do one more loop around the last finger hole, just so that we can secure down all the T's that we just made on the end. Some programs choose to use a spotter tape and to find where you need to put your spotter tape, you just take two fingers and move it up and down the saber until you find the balance point. And then you just take a small little chunk of black tape and put it along the back of your saber. So the next step in our taping process is putting on our catch shape. And the catch shape is utilized in a multitude of ways. It, it can be used for hand placement on the saber when referring to choreography. It is essential for dipping to release timing from an ensemble standpoint and catching together. So to ensure that we can properly utilize our catch shape, we have to make sure that our catch shape is the same on every saber that we have in our program. So the standard length from the tip to where the top of the catch tape should be is 11 inches. So I brought out our trusty dusty ruler and I go 11 inches down and then I take my white tape and I place the top line of where my catch shape will be right at the 11 inch mark so that there are no discrepancies. Because if we put, let's say we put the middle of the catch shape at 11 inches, there might be some discrepancies from person to person while taping. You can also use a ruler to measure the 11 inches, or you can just get a standard piece of printer paper and put it at the end of the tip and the end of that paper should be where your catch tape goes. So now that we have our catch tape properly placed on our saber, we can utilize parts of the saber more effectively during rehearsal. So we can say in our dips, we're gonna have our pointer finger on the catch shape. And for our catches, we will also have the same pointer finger on catch shape. And you can start to get into those definitions a little bit easier when you have this tool in your toolkit. So, I hope you found something useful and interesting today, and thank you for coming to Technique Tuesday. I'd like to say a special thank you to Thomas Fitzpatrick for joining us today, and thanks for watching Technique Tuesday with Hip Visual Solutions. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our Hip Visual 
YouTube channel to stay up to date on the latest videos and information. You can also follow us on social media. We are at Hip Visual on Instagram and Twitter and Hip Visual Solutions on Facebook. Visit our website, www.hipvisualsolutions.com to book consultations, fittings, and more for your program.